everyone, my name's Catherine and I'm the Axis Officer for the Physics Department at Oxford University. Today we're going to have a look at question 5 from the 2013 PAT paper. Now I'm going to try and solve this really uh, methodically and step by step. You may find that you can skip a couple of these steps and solve it more simply. And as always, if you've got a slightly different method that still seems to work, that is uh, rigorous and that comes up with the right answer, then that's probably okay. Alright, let's have a look at the question then. If x equals log base 10 of 100 plus log base 5 of root 25 minus log base 3 of y squared and x over 2 equals log base 2 of 8 minus log base 10 of root 10 plus 2 log base 3 of y, find x and y. So the first thing to note is that we've got logs with lots of different bases here. So uh, we're going to have to handle each of these individually and then I'm sort of expecting we're going to end up with a couple of simultaneous equations because we've got two equations that both involve x and y. Essentially the task is going to be to make these simple enough to work with. So let's start with the first one. We've got that x equals log base 10 of 100 plus log base 5 of square root of 25 minus log base 3 of y squared. Okay, 100 is 10 squared. So we've got log base 10 of 10 squared. Square root of 25 is 5, and I'm just going to put that in like that for now. Log base 5 of 5, and then we've got minus log base 3 of y squared. Now, a log of something to a power, uh, we, if we remember our log rules, we'll know we can bring that power down to the front. So what would that give us? That will give us 2 log base 10 of 10, plus, uh, there's no power to change here, log base 5 of 5, and then bringing that 2 down as well, we have 2 log base 3 of y. Uh, okay, log base 10 of 10 is 1. That's our definition of a log. Log base 5 of 5 is also 1. Then there's nothing else we can do with that one. So let's change these out. So we've got 2 times 1 is just 2. Plus uh, log base 5 of 5 is 1. Minus 2 log base 3 of y. So uh, that finally gives us that x equals 3 minus 2 log 3 of y which looks a whole lot easier to handle. So that was our first equation from the question. Now let's do the same kind of thing with our second equation. So this time we've got x over 2, let's not forget that, equals log base 2 of 8 minus 9 log base 10 of square root of 10 plus 2 log base 3 of y. Now how can we simplify this? Let's have a look at what's uh, sort of in these logs, if that makes sense. So we've got log base 2, uh, 8 is 2 to the power of 3. Uh, then we've got minus log, sorry, minus 9 log base 10. Uh, square root of 10 we will rewrite as 10 to the half. And we've got our plus 2 log 3 of y. And now doing the same thing using our log rule to bring the power down, uh, we'll have 3 log base 2 of 2 minus uh, 9 times a half, so 9 over 2 times log base 10 of 10 plus 2 log base 3 of y. Again, then we've got our log base 2 of 2 is 1, log base 10 of 10 is also 1. So we've got 3 minus 9 over 2 plus 2 log base 3 of y. 3 minus 9 over 2, 9 over 2 is 4 and a half. Uh, 3 minus 4 and a half is going to be minus 1 and a half, so minus 3 over 2. So that gives us minus 3 over 2 plus 2 log base 3 of y. 
Uh, okay, two possible routes we could go from here. Um, we've now got our two simultaneous equations. We've got one, uh, we've got x equals 3 minus 2 log base 3 of y. And we've got x over 2 equals minus 3 over 2 plus 2 log base 3 of y. So we just need to solve these simultaneous equations. Um, if I put the x in there and the x over 2 in there, just so that we can be really clear what we're dealing with. Those are our two equations. One route from here would be to add this equation to this equation. That would lose that uh, 2 log y term and we could solve for x and then substitute back in to get for y. Um, alternatively, we could uh, multiply this equation by 2 and then substitute through for x. Um, either will work, I reckon. So, uh, what do I fancy doing? I'm going to multiply this equation by 2. So I'm going to call this equation 1. So that was our simplified version of the first equation. I'm going to call this equation 2. So I'm going to do equation 2 uh, times 2. And that is going to give me x equals minus 3 uh, plus 4 log base 3 of y. Uh, and I can see that that equals equation 1, because up here we've got x equals. So equals, rewriting equation 1, we've got 3 minus 2 log base 3 of y. At this point, to make it look a little bit simpler for myself, I'm going to say, I'm going to define a variable a. I'm going to define a as log base 3 of y. This is not something you would have to do. For me, this makes it simpler to see what's going on. Although these equations are relatively straightforward, if you were dealing with something a little bit more complicated, you could find something like this really helpful. So I'm going to define a as log base 3 of y, because then that means I've got uh, minus 3 plus 4 log base 3 of y is just a equals 3 minus 2 a. And now I'm just solving for a. Uh, so, what will that give me? Uh, so that will give me that 6a equals 6, i.e. a equals 1. So, log base 3 of y equals 1, which means that y must be 3, because log base 3 of 3 is 1. We now know that y is 3, or that a is 1, um, so we can resubstitute that back into any of our equations. Let's resubstitute it into 1, which is that x equals 3 minus 2a. So x equals 3 minus 2a. We know that a is 1, so that equals 3 minus 2, which is just 1. So x equals 1. Those are our... Uh, those are our values for x and y. So that's this problem solved. So what did we do? We uh, went through and we simplified these equations uh, using our log rules to come out with something that was a lot easier to work with. We did that for both of the equations and then we simply treated them as a pair of simultaneous equations and uh, solved them to find what x and y were and we finished up with x equals 1 and y equals 3. So that's our answer for question five on the 2013 PAT paper.